Hi everyone, it's Chris Coleman, Artistic Director for the DCPA Theatre Company, and I'm delighted that you were able to carve out time to join us for this very special presentation of Tantalus Behind the Mask. I've heard so many stories about this production, and I am jealous of those of you who got to see the original. It premiered some 20 years ago here in Denver. It's one of the most ambitious undertakings ever in the history of theater. It took some 16 years to write, six months to rehearse, and nine plays to capture the story of the Trojan War. And the collaborators were really the top rank in, in our field. You know, John Barton, the legendary writer and director from the Royal Shakespeare Company, and Peter Hall, the eminent director at the helm. And he pull, pulled together um, collaborators from Japan, Greece, the UK, Ireland, and of course the United States. Uh, you could watch the whole thing in a day if you really had the stamina, or you could watch it over two consecutive nights. This documentary, luckily, was put together by the Denver Center Media uh, folks, and they had a front row seat to the backstage intrigue and the stories happening uh, before the show hit opening night, so you're in for a treat. You know, this has been an extraordinary year for so many of us, and especially those of us in the arts. The Denver Center alone has had to cancel 36 productions. One of the ways that we are planning our resurgence um, is through our recovery fund. Um, it's a fund that has been designed to help us rehire actors, relaunch programming on stage, and bring our team back to do the work that you love. If you're in a position at this time of year to contribute, to the recovery fund, it would be amazing. We have a goal of $4 million, we're well on our way, but your participation would be so meaningful. There'll be a link in the chat um, that you can check out and make it super easy for you. If you're watching this live and questions come up, um, put them in the chat down at the bottom of your screen and we may be able to answer them um, in real time, but if not, we'll capture them. We're gonna film a, a Q&A with uh, a couple of actors who are in Tantalus and um, a couple of creative team members. And, and that will be available for viewing in about a week. So you want to check back to the link that brought you to this presentation. Hopefully we'll go even deeper. Again, thank you so much. Stay healthy. Have a wonderful holidays. And I'll see you soon. The Denver Center Media, the Denver Center for the Performing Arts, we're above the clouds, going towards a mountainous horizon. Sunlight on the water. In the azure archipelago of the Aegean Sea, at the dawn of history, the rising sun, the city-states of Greece launched a thousand ships of war and set sail for the east to rescue Helen of Troy. Shadow of a warrior. Brandishing his weapon. Ocean waves. Like sea worn wreckage Mass washed ashore heart. from a distant the age, sand. the ten years of battle and bloodshed which followed live on today in the fragmentary myths of the Trojan War. The warrior with his shield and his sword. Modern day. 3,000 years after the war became legend, Royal Shakespeare Company director and playwright John Barton set out on his own odyssey to resurrect these ancient stories and cast their timeless light the on a modern world, at once very different and yet very much Moving the same, modern day theater. with an army of the finest artists, actors and technicians from five countries, Sir Peter Hall adapted Barton's text for the stage of the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. It was a daunting task, as bold as the Greek plan to build a Trojan horse. People bringing in props. Tantalus would become a tale of heroic Showing endurance and terrifying uncertainty bone-weary exhaustion After and hopefully sleeping. triumph. Showing the warrior with his band behind him. A mask in the shadows moving towards us. Ancient script floating across its face. Closer still, 
Now we're looking through the eye of the mask at the ancient script. Tantalist, moving from ancient to modern text. Tantalist, showing a mask with a gaping mouth behind it over water. Now we uh, see a man on a beach with a box of wares. Apollo! Aphrodite! Holding up different statues. Zeus! Holding out to each goers. Producer, co-director, Benjamin Francis Phelan. Who is to blame? Someone takes the box from What him. is the truth of it? And how could it have been otherwise? Co-producer, production manager, Carrie Dignan Roy. I call it... The man is in a Kick. white linen suit. Epic Kiklu, Lightsana! The epic cycle of the lost bits. Cinematographer, Jim Ferrer. The stories of the game of you. Looks about... Well, sell us the story then. The beach goer asks. Editor Bryce Button. The universal egg Holds up the from which the all things were born. Leaves it around. Gods as well as men. And so the golden age began when Zeus ruled over Olympus and men and women lived like gods. Director Dirk Olsen. Writer John Barton. In the beginning, or perhaps a little after, a black dove was seen flying north from Egypt. It flew and it flew and it flew till it came to an ancient oak tree, ancient, gnarled and twisted, in the mountains of the Northlands. It perched there and it rested till it chirped and it twittered and began to proclaim the oracle of Zeus. Bird alights from a tree. When Tantalus was conceived, Trevor Nobles, the artistic Noble, director artistic of the director, RSC, Royal and Royal he handed over to Terry Hands, and John was meanwhile still working on it. And then in 1990, I became artistic director of the RSC. Nobody had seen a single page that John had written. In fact, there was no material evidence that John had written anything at all. I thought what would happen was that one day, as is the way with us all, and I've known this man and loved him for 50 Director years. speaking to an audience. Um, he would drop off the twig, and I would find myself named his literary executor. <laughs> and I would go round to his apartment and find about 740 pages of notes. <laughs> because what Adrian says is quite true. None of us actually thought he would finish it. Many of us thought he wasn't actually writing it. <laughs> What he was doing was dreaming. And then one day, as with Adrian, he arrives with an armful. And he says, there you are to me. Finished. Well, I haven't done the last one yet, he said. <laughs> but enough of it was finished for one to look at it and to realize what Showing an extraordinary of piece of work it production. is. Tatalus is actually 10 sequential plays Molded into one. Donald R. Sewell, it involves the events founder, leading the to the Trojan the War, Arts. the Trojan War, and the homecomings. And of course, Greece was a cradle Shining of Greek civilization ladies. for the Western world. It was a cradle of democracy. Coliseum. And it's just uncanny how relevant everything in this play is to what's happening today. Well, years ago, I John put Barton, together author. some of the existing. Greek plays to make the whole story of Troy and I wanted to bring the wonderful old material to the world today but to give it a bit of a slant and a look that made it very pertinent to today without losing the basic guts of the original. Showing Greek statues. Among the thousands of Greek myths this material is at no, the longest. Modern it's costumes. Something like a fifth of the whole of Greek myth that survived, and it is a continuous story 
with a logical sequence, but that nobody's put them together since the Greeks themselves did it in material that so has been lost. It was a story that drew me because it seemed to me a marvellous. Where all the things that happen in it still happen today. And it, life hasn't changed in 5,000 years. Plane at British Airways at DIA. A man, woman, and child. Ten hours ago, I was in London struggling with enough luggage to keep us all happy here for six months. My wife and little daughter, age seven. Uh, and now I'm in Denver. <laughs> The butterflies in my stomach, uh, uh, because I, I start the project on Monday, and it's also on the first day that you realize whether you should be doing it or whether you've made a ghastly mistake. Pantelis flags in front of the DCPA. Everyone in the theater says, oh God, it can't be done, it's too big. Well, I uh, wake up Showing the shaking with the fright and laughing at the same time. Uh, it, it's Marley, terribly exhorting, it's terribly Denver intimidating, just the size and scope of it. We tried to get the very best from all over the world. People greeting. We have Septizana from Greece. Dionysus is one of the great treasure houses of European art and design. He's an extraordinary bloke, you'll enjoy him. The lighting designer from Japan. It was simply that we were all sitting around saying, well, how can we get to light it? And Mick said to me, well, ask Yoshi, he's the best. And I said, well, he'd never do it. He wouldn't. He said, well, ask him, there's nothing lost. So we asked him and got a letter back saying, when do we start? We have an Irish composer who will be doing the music for Not us. Our choreographer, you all know, and he's going to be an enormous asset to our variegated team. Use them, love them. You want the music first before you do the dancing, is that right? <laughs> they all say that. No, 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 no. Oh, that's no we can work in tandem very well. Good. Good. The challenges are massive because you know, you're not really thinking, as a, what's it like to, um, you know, we're not, we're not talking about sitcoms or soaps here. We're talking about what's it like if your children have been killed? What do you then do? What's it like if your city has just been torched and you're not watching it on the television in the corner of your room? It's you. A woman I can't think in a mask, of red a hair, theatrical event of different greater from the play. in ambition or in, in many ways more magnificent in scale. I can't think of anything bigger than there has ever been, actually. I mean, there have been cycles of plays, but, no, but nothing on this scale at all. Is it expensive? Yes. Is it a gamble? Certainly. Are there naysayers out there that say we're going to fall on our face? Of course. But is it worth it? You're damn right it is. Berating a woman with red hair as she crawls on the beach. But I think we could do something. The and she's his which sword. We'll enter the Guinness Book of Records. A woman runs from Either beach, because it's the scenes. most awful thing that ever happened, <laughs> or the longest, or the best. Thank you very much. Speaking of dinner, they raise their glasses. The actors in a circle, stretching. This is in April. Director, I've got um, two remarkable fellows working with, with me on this who I, I, I know to be a couple of the most um, extraordinary young directors of their generation. A director Back, takes go, a woman's go, go, head, who's kneeling, twists yeah, yeah. it around. Has the girl gone mad? So that I'm going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One is Mick Gordon, who I met first when he was at the National Theatre Studio and taught him a bit. Now he runs the Gate Theatre in London, which is the leading sort of avant-garde, off-Broadway type theatre in London. Uh, and he's sharp as a razor and, and going to be a really, really important director. Shows me directing. How could I enjoy a single moment? Beating off a group with a sword. Oh, oh, oh. 
there are two sides to that question. There are two, there are two, well, there are the challenges are the same as as every time you work on a new piece of work. So try and be brave enough to not to make decisions too quickly McGordon, and corner yourself. And then to try and work with two other directors, which I haven't done before. And Discussing just table. to keep renegotiating that relationship. And the other guy, Edward Hall, I find in a way more difficult to talk about because he's my own son, one of them. He's assisted me, but on the whole, he's stayed away from me quite properly during the 10 years or so he's been developing as a director and he's been working all over the world. He works at the Royal Shakespeare now. In fact, in the middle of this, he's going off to do Henry V at Stratford. So we lose him for about seven weeks, which is sad. Well, I think what's challenging for the actors is, you know, you, you, you come to a scene that you've done with director A and you walk into a room with director B and director B says, could you do it like this or could you try this? And they go, that's not what director A said. And director B says, exactly. Edward Hall, director. And then you go on, you see what I mean? And, and it's actually trying on lots of different ideas and finding how that can, can free you off. Actors stretching out their mouths, warming up. They're in a circle. Camera spins around the shoulder. Most theatres would say, do not employ a director who comes in on the first day of rehearsal and says, I have no idea what the set's like. We have no costume designs. I don't know anything about it. You see one before you this morning. It's, it's very exciting to be part of a process where I think uh, all of the actors are included Robert Petkoff, in the creation, actor. not just of their roles, but of the entire project. The audience won't read the face with the mask on, this so they is need gonna to see and acknowledge This is going to be horrible. Practicing Go against ahead. another woman. And do as I tell you. And looks at her penetrating. Yeah. Walks away. Then I'm here so we don't have to walk back. Yeah, and, up. And, and the move weakened it in the yes. first place. Yes. Yeah. And then go in the house. Yeah. Then it can just be. Now she's gone. Let's have a story. Now in the performance. Do you want to hear a story? The man runs out. A tale of blood. He's got better. a knife. Take care of Goes back and forth. On his knees, crying with a mask. I'm scared. I'm frightened. The woman. I won't be able to sleep. Caresses his arm. Until you have told me a story. Why are you crying, little one? It's yourself you hear weeping. Come to bed and I will tuck you in. And if you're very good, I will tell you a new story. Waves of the ocean now. Imagine a situation where there's a man tied up in a pool of water and the water rises and falls and he's very, very thirsty, so he loves it when it comes up towards him, but then he gets nervous because if it comes too high, it's going to drown him. And as soon as he gulps to try and get a drink before it does, it subsides. And on top of the poor devil, devil is tied there with a great huge rock above him and the curse that Zeus who put him there puts on him is that the rock hasn't fallen yet and it almost certainly won't but one day it will lightning flashes it's something big, bigger than relevance I think it, it's something basic a little story which tells us about ourselves and our own lives and fears and hopes it's not reflected in this model right now because it does obscure the model Bill to do Curley, it but there's a catwalk structure designer. up above us here and uh, in that catwalk structure Showing hanging right about there will be the rock and the rock is well what is the rock I would rather ask people what the rock suggests in their mind. I mean, as a as a image, a metaphor, it's pretty potent. I'm not saying, hey, folks, it means that. I'm raising the question, what does that image mean to you? The firmament. 
uh, and it hangs above the piece all night long and it interacts with the piece uh, all night long, I'm saying, <laughs> for the entire performance cycle. And it interacts with the piece in that when, at certain moments, when dangerous things happen, when odd moments hit, when crises hit, the rock will tremble. Showing them cowering. Maybe fall a little Looking bit. Up. And debris will fall off of the rock onto the stage. So the sense is that this thing can crash to the earth, destroying everything under it at any moment. Don't you see? The great rock is falling! The rock is where it always was, no higher, no lower. Have courage! Go on! My lord! She is coming! Tantalus is so named because of the story that John Barton has told you. It's really interesting because that is the overarching myth within which an individual should watch this piece. It's the filter that, that begins the play and ends the play. Everybody walks under the hanging rock. That is the human condition. This is why history will repeat itself in a changing context, but will inevitably repeat itself because human nature has not altered. And that's what John says. Got, uh, this is Actress going the, script. the script. Huge and it, it changes so and often. And Jeffrey's principal so, actor. You know, these, these tabs are quite useful because during a day you might go from a scene in page five, which I've just pulled out because we're doing that after lunch, and then come back over here to this building and work Cassandra pages certain, 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 and then go back over to the other building and work... Um... <laughs> so we're jumping back and forth all, all over. The best thing about the whole process Directors has been the, the lack of structure betrays, like, nine hours of story. in the way we've worked together. It kind of works like this. One person has an idea, is inspired by something. They follow that idea through in the rehearsal room. When it's right, one of the other directors or both the other directors will watch that work, respond to it, comment on it, add to it, develop it, then maybe take it on if they're inspired by something from that piece of work. But first and foremost, Office. we're going with the creative energy that we generate. We're entirely different. You go into one of our, our rehearsals and another one. But it's wonderful to pop in and out of each other's rehearsals and yeah. see how it's working, how they're working. I mean, mix energy impresses me enormously. Edward's care impresses me enormously. And I think to myself, I wonder after all these years whether I'm so careful, or I wonder after all these years whether I have that much energy. Uh, and and it, I find that really stimulating and interesting. Glad you're a slave. A prize of war and such women are treacherous. Practice I in the theater. The secret of how your city fell. It fell, do not talk of it. Did, did you know that this woman is sharing the bed of the man who made Priam take in the horse? I know what they made him do. It's good, it's good. It's fine. You have to live with you. you see their feet as they scurry Shut around in a circle? Trust in Zeus. You're becoming hysterical. You're making me hysterical! Every time, every the process is interesting. At the beginning, it was quite it's fun and entertaining to have three of us because we could share the discussions about what was working, what was not working, and argue. Seven years. Yeah, seven years. Here we are. Right. Yeah, and you've got, to, you've got to work the story like crazy. And um, Peter and Anthony and Michael and folks can have an opportunity to to further our discussion that we had at half past two yesterday. We haven't got an end section. Right. Um, but what we think, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's worth just sharing this with everybody, what we think at the minute is that we should begin the third evening with Thrace, with Cassandra, and the horror of that, right? We're not sure we think this. Well, we're not sure, but we're gonna try this. Yes, we are. Then we're gonna move on into this one which we think has very good stuff in it. Oh, there's Yushu, okay. the lighting. 
Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. But the problem is that the color is not quite reflecting the surface. The I think, I think it's better, better if we later we go on the stage. Uh, we've uh, we've met Dionysus. He came in uh, a couple of months ago. Yes. He showed up in the uh, rehearsal room, and uh, we turned around, and one of the actresses said. Who's that? And the other actress said, I think it's Zeus. He's got <laughs> white long hair and a beard. Um, first of all, I'm working with my hands and, you know. It's looking at different pictures. I'm an old Dionysus, Photopolis, scenic and costume designer. I'm not com working with computers and things like that. And I like the materials, I like the, the, the actors, I like to, to, I try to find its part through the sounds and uh, through the movements of the actor and through, through the thoughts of the director and all these things. I'm, you know, uh, I'm from this kind of things, the human way is very important for me. He has a wonderfully flexible kind of aesthetic. Uh, he's done work that is in, has been in formal environments and, you know, proscenium spaces. He's done work that has been outdoors in, in the open. Uh, there's one particular design that takes place in a wheat field. And the audience surrounded this wheat field. It looked like a wonderful production, which is great. Um, he said there was a problem with that production, they kept losing technicians in the grass. The images he puts on stage are gorgeous. Now he gave us drawings like this, which is as close to the to a, a back of a napkin drawing as I've ever gotten. But that's not a criticism because this man, he is so good that he can explain what, what he wants in, in a drawing like this. And he trusts us enough to be able to build from stage. this. This man's a genius. If you see his work, the guy is a genius. Flowing, there, there, there is a reason figures. that he is here and not somebody else, because he is the person to do the show, I think. You know, you won't particularly get a technical drawing out of him or any see sense of how of it's going to turn it looks out. Looks like Zeus. They're cutting it out. It's a face. He walks in with a load of material Hiding and sticks a mask on somebody and then builds the character and then turns to the wardrobe and, says, oh, this is it. <laughs> and, and goes off and and it's done. Puts the Zeus face over his. It's an angry frowning face. He works in a very creative and anarchic fashion, which I love. Sketches of the women on the beach and the bikinis. Sketch of the set. big tent that comes down and covers Thank the Thank you, boy. <laughs> we are here at the theater and downstairs on the stage. She's above. Um, they are the rehearsing theater. the prologue at the very beginning of the play. And I'm not needed down there. And I'm working on a prototype for my mask for Cassandra. Alyssa. Which, um, it's just these ideas that I've been having. The actors have had a major amount Kevin of input, which is great. Mass I mean, they should. They're they're the ones on stage performing. Showing plain masks, a lot of plastering. mask work. The word is very erroneous these days because mask seems to be hide, hide, and it's not. Mask is actually reveal, like a like a lens, like a focus, uh, and when it works, it makes the text more vibrant. The comedy have more edge, the argument clearer. Well, the experience of masks, yeah, I was just going to say masks, <laughs> so masks here and Mitchell, is, is completely new to me. I have never worked with masks before, although I've done Greek plays. I never have. And I guess like anybody else, there's a thrill about learning something new. I have found Actors the few workshops the I've done with Ed and with Peter um, very, um, very disturbing and moving. Absolutely. It's a strange thing that when you've got that mask on, something happens that it, it brings forth something very, very real inside the actor. And for a long time, I wasn't able to speak at all. Two masked actors face each other. One going behind a wardrobe. The full mask is wrapped in antiquity. 
Every single ancient society to be used plastered. the full mask in order to dance, um, to get close to the gods, His whole face to make stories and to make plays. Why? They had faces. I think what the ancient full mask does is open. make it possible to release things in yourself and present them which you almost didn't know were there. The play is very contemporary in the way that John has written it. I think that John has written it so that it won't be uh, a traditional, you know, uh, uh, Greek tragedy, but that it will be very contemporary in the way it tells its tales. And I didn't see how no, masks would help that. I actually thought they would get in the way of that. Um, it's something I still struggle with. I mean, I, I see now uh, moments like where yours. I think they they completely get in the way of what we need to tell. There are moments of sheer brilliance that I no longer can conceive of how that scene would work without a mask. There's a man covered in blood, rubbing his blood this from the, the inside of his thigh wife? on a woman's face. I cannot prevent mask. you from shedding this girl's blood since Achilles' ghost commands it. But if you also try to humiliate Polixena, it is you who will be humiliated and held in contempt for the rest of your mortal life. If you tell the story clearly and hold the emotion down and allow the audience to read on the mask, what it is you're telling. You don't actually need to cry. Plain you have to tell about crying. Now, how do I, you look so how do I, do I well, I'll tell you. Do tears. They're decorating the mask. Because, oh, my love. Oh, no, no, I mean, I have to, I have to weep as well. But, I mean, you can start. Actors are yeah, trying to yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, figure out yeah. emotions. If you, if you take it down. When you've got thoughts after thoughts yes, after thoughts, yes. after thoughts then, then it's there. There's the thought. Okay, so it's when, head, when, heart, when you've got, pelvis. When you've got to collapse. Yes. Yeah. The impulse probably would begin here for me. Okay. Don't, 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 don't collapse down like that. No, then. because then I then yeah, that's it. She grabs her face, her chin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bending down. Try putting it. Try um, Try. I've never done that. Try putting your hands over your. Over your <laughs> she covers her eyes. No, that's not good. Try putting your hand here. Still showing him making a mess. <laughs> It's <laughs> palm to her forehead. That's great. That's brilliant. On one hand, on one hand. She <laughs> switches her hand to cover one side of her face. Now you have to reach. As it reaches out. Exactly. There you go. Kill me now and have done. I love you. Woman holding a dead baby, bloody hands. Not now, but when you were home and I had made you my queen, and if the gods bless your womb again, I will give you new children. Shirtless warrior with bloody hands. I am your slave now. If you give me power, I will use it to kill you. She bends over the yes, child. Yes, that is possible. <laughs> and perhaps it would be just, but the form or the time or the place is unknown to either of us. I will take my chance, as all must who love women. <laughs> bends over her. Now an older man's mask with a mustache comes towards us. We go through his mouth. To me, Mick, if we want to do this, director Mick on the stage. That has to get. We have to get that established a little bit earlier. Mick, you might, you might be special because of this cut. You might be completely right. We'll do a new, we'll do a new line and go. The show ends. Lights up. The director. The beach. A cave. And a woman on the computer. I think there's a strong feeling from the directors that the narrative engine, if you like, Emily of the plays breaks down at Barton. certain points. And consequently, there are, there's a, a feeling that certain bits should be tightened or, or, or cut to reduce or to, to make possible this, this narrative motor. So that, again, we're simplifying in order that we, we establish these characters so that the audience know where we are. So changes are being made to, to, to kind of tighten this and, and Colin Teven is, is doing sort of rewrites and, and tweaking and preening to, to kind of tighten together the narrative. The director is going what is the, the truth of it? How could it have been otherwise? Can swans really... My role is to, in one sense... So I cuddled it. Colin Teven. 
assist the directors in clarifying the story as we go through it. I think the middle sections of the play are in excellent condition when we got them. We've had a lot of difficulties with the beginning and the ending. His webbed feet explored me. They were soft and wet and so nice. Which god was it? And John is dealing with very complicated ideas to do with truth and lies, to do with the uh, what is the truth of stories and storytelling. Um, and what we're trying to do is put that in such a form that it is theatrically vivid. Once you, once you have the opportunity to see a run-through, it shows up the dramatic structural weaknesses very, very quickly. Um, people, some people will sit there and go, that's not quite working. And it's my job and Colin Teven's job to tell people why it's not working and then make the adjustment from that. But that's just something that you know very quickly and the hard work is to find out exactly why. Can we buy enough time for this? Discussing in the it was clear to me at the beginning of May that a great deal of the script um, wasn't working and wasn't going to work, and that some of it indeed was not finished. Have you got That's always so with new writing, or tends to be. I think John was uh, unwilling to rewrite, change, and edit, and cut as much as I wanted, but then authors always are. And authors always put the cuts back for publication. This is perfectly normal. And you made it all yourself. No, many poets made it. I've merely made up the bits. You made them up. That's Edward disgraceful. Hull. That's the line. And don't we need to bring? Didn't we want to bring back the god bit? He looks at the script. The no, we no? didn't because we've done that already. Okay. It's there. So let's. Yeah. Um, so we're, so, how do we fit that in there? Uh, no, many. You made it all yourself. That's the line. Now they're in the carpentry We're shop We're waiting in quite a bit on, on the, the actual play to, to come together Bob a little Orzo, more in rehearsal. Orzola. The information has, has kind of stalled. Uh, they've been working and, and rewriting and redoing this and trying to figure out what they actually want. We, uh, we're going to start June 19th with a staff of um, 10 carpenters and a purchasing agent. And we kind of got put off. Our prop shop is a six-person shop, and Corey we're Seymour, anxious to get going. Artisan. And uh, we're sort of sitting here in limbo, waiting. It's so what strange that the one of us mistakes Odysseus for Zeus. Zeus. Yeah, Zeus after had such, such a joke. long trial with Odysseus. Mm -hmm. We need to be a little clearer about our call to action in terms of description the of the project. Table, I think team. all of the copy that we're getting now is kind of just a reorganization of the same thought and the same. Verbiage. This is the problem of Tantalus. We, we, we Adrian, would have to come up Brian with a language Brown, that could Tantalus really explain Martin, it to a really different audience. How do you explain Tantalus? How do you explain what it is? Um, there are precedents, but you know, I, I had superficial thoughts of, is it a George Lucas trilogy? Is it, do we go that far? Do we say this is an extraordinary adventure? Well, it is, but, but at the same time, we, we can't be that Deceptive. It's, it's wrong to like, come up with language production. that's sexy but isn't true. Men drinking from a goblet. Is that it's still the running time is still in flux. Tantalus continues to be its own beast. Showing a mask with a skeleton and a horned animal on it. Now the sky. Of a car junkyard. It's got lots of hubcaps and. Well, here we are in a junkyard clanking. somewhere on the edge of Denver. <laughs> and and um, we're here to. We've been here to find some percussion instruments that are really um, pieces of metal from cars. Well, we just, we're doing this piece in this play. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very fast and furious sort of warrior dance. So there's uh -huh. lots of guys with swords and shields. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're. Um, and somebody had the idea of using brake drums. Donald McHale, the, the, the choreographer, made that suggestion when we were composing a piece of dance music. And he said, well, why don't we try brake drums? And, and, and using metal composer in, in and percussion music director. is, 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 is you know, it's very common. And using found objects to play percussion is, is also well known. So we thought, that's a good idea. We have mallets hitting against different brake drums. I've been looking for brake drums that have a particular note. 
so that they can fit in with the piece of music that I'm writing. They go through rows and rows of big drums. You're never working in a blank, in a completely blank area. There's all, there are always clues, I think. I think most of the time you, you sort of stalk ideas and you sort, of, you, you sort of stalk them into a corner where they can't get out. No, no, do you know, I think we've got them. Someone has a paint bucket on end. They're in the junkyard playing. Put it, put it. Now showing it. Put it, put it. Being put it, into put it, left. production. The Achilles put it, War Dance is one of the set pieces that that is necessary for the telling of this story. And so I, what I wanted to do was to investigate, and I've done many war dances that come from many other cultures. One of the things that war dances share is that they beat a drum inside the performer's a heart that gets the rhythm and energy that's needed to go out and do this task. And so this dance has to be uh, the pinnacle of the, of the play, of that particular play. It's got to be the, the sort of the crest of the wave of the, war, of, the, of the desire for war on the part of the Greeks. Uh, and and uh, we wanted it to be exciting and, and fast and furious and dance. dangerous. Ah! Jumping. No, it's ah! 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 Jump in the air. I say ah! It also Good. brings the warriors ah. together. Good. So it's a celebration of this deed that must be accomplished. It also must make them fearsome, so it has to have a horrific side to it. And it also must practice what they need to be survivors. And also to take away fear. Practicing on stage. So that was what I started with, and I said, part of what I need is to have a very uneven rhythm. And I was first of all working in something in 9-8. Uh, I had an idea, and talking with Donald, he said, well, why don't we try something uh, which has got a surprising kind of shift in it, like 7-8. He speaks with the drummer. Because people expect things to happen in a symmetrical way, and if you have an uneven rhythm, you're constantly going, we're... You don't think the arm goes, the body goes. What if I'm deflecting something and the blow goes? And then I go forward. The thrust is there. And then there's a great joy because I've accomplished that. But I must be wary. Somebody's coming at me from the other side, so I turn. So the rhythm is, is that. One, two, three, four. One, two, shift, shift. One, two, three, four. One, two, shift, shift. One, two, three, four. One, two, shift, shift. One, two, three, four. Jumping, one, moving their bodies. Shift, shift. One, two. Upper bodies, side to side. Your legs are in the screen to go. Don't take another going down. Please. Let's do it again. Make sure it wasn't a statement you know, of my imagination. A moment never to be Showing them in practice. Now, shifting back and forth between practice and their actual performance. They have shields and swords. Kicking. Slashing. Stabbing. Now they crouch. Why have you chosen the wrong shape? The wrong shape. Okay, guys, that was to jumps up and down. All right, but they are actually Playing blue. Playing Trivial Pursuit. So what's a Myrmidon? Myrmidons are Ant-Men because them on the when, uh, when uh, somebody wanted an army, <laughs> they like zap. No, it's no, like uh, somebody, Theseus. like Theseus wanted an army. Peleus. Peleus wanted an army and so he summoned zapped an ant hill and made them into Showing soldiers. Warrior. No, he summoned them. 
Did he summon them? You know, somebody These zapped Ant and they were lighting with all their sides. I turned Ant into some goddess and made them advance. That's who we are. Uh, no lining? Clock. Now it shows people in their office. Calcus flies out of the chair. Right. The and chair. how does he get taken out? Do the red and the blue in front of that. Mm -hmm. And we don't notice it. So, yeah, yeah I think, we, should we just trip that out? Oh, who knows? There was a D day when we had to have everything in, but it has passed by about a month and a half. Showing the set <laughs> it's, thing. It's, it's all up in the air. We we we're trying daily to get to get more information uh, uh, to to work with. You have an idea of how long it takes to do something, how long it takes to put together a show. And I think all of us see the scale of this show, and we see our deadlines looming in the distance. And if that's what you mean by being a prophet, I think we see the size of the project and what's going to be expected of us, and we see the days disappearing. And that's a little frightening. But I fear that in war, there is always a risk of mistakes. Men and women. You call this a mistake? Confusion, doubt, and chaos, those are the three furies that confound the plans of men. Group of women behind them. We got the word that the whole schedule the was practice. going to change. So now I'm rebuilding everything now and beginning team. on the 26th of March, of March, Anderson, July, director, we will start calling every services. single patron to massage them through the changes. There will be no three-day cycles. Director of there will only be two-day cycles. On the phone. And the actors and everyone are all very excited about having at least two or three marathons where you start at 10 o'clock in the morning and you finish at 11.30 at night. Because this version right now, I feel, uh, we're going to watch a play about a poet. About um, and that poet. I, I feel like we're about to watch uh, oh, right. a cycle that's about a poet and not anything no, 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 about right. It's about tension, it's about dramatic tension mm. at the beginning. Mm. Which was yeah. really rather good. <laughs> For the directors in the theatre. Kind of grew out of these girls being hit on this island. Now it's like it's, I'm not quite sure what it is. I, mean, I, mean, I, I don't actually disagree with what yeah, you're I'm saying. Not, I, don't. But I think it's worth reminding everybody that we spent days and days and days and days on the first 20 pages trying to find a way of making them actually mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. uh, and we succeeded in making bits of them live, but we never succeeded in making anything that was watchable, actually. All these seems to have been in there with John's work. That's part of the problem. It's, we, don't, we don't deal with drama, we deal with theme right. in his oh, work great. all the time. It's not drama, it's just different notions that are, that are very, very interesting for us to talk about, not to watch. When we see them together, the... the... Thi the thi tra tra I mean, Fuck, trying to be objective about this is tricky because you're just trying to let go of some of the versions that we've been through because we've been through about 12 versions of the prologue already. Because we've cut play 10 right down from two hours to about 14 and 15 minutes. Uh, they're very different, but they're not very different because Peter Hall thinks he's a better writer than John Barton, but because Peter Hall is trying to make something work on the stage. The, the basic clash John between Barton. us happened when I came over with him as writer and the other directors weren't around for a while to help the thing out I worked a bit as a sort of temporary director till the others came and unbeknown to me while that was happening he was rewriting my first play in another room with another writer and I didn't even know he was doing it oh, John's been aware that there have been changes going on from the word go I mean no one's hidden that at all we've been absolutely frank and open with him um, no new play could hope to go to performance without undergoing some sense of development. And this project has developed, I think, in an extremely rich and healthy fashion. Um, faxes have gone to him. His personal assistant, Emily Blacksell, has been kept in, has kept in touch with him. Um, there's been no secrets over the whole process. John um, really felt Emily that Blacksell? it would be extremely inhibiting for directors and actors to have an author present in the rehearsal room. He felt that I could be here on his behalf. That would be more liberating both for the directors and for the company. I don't know whether he now feels that that, that was the right decision. You see, he made me feel that if I directed it exactly the way he'd written it, then it would work. And I know that isn't true.
I th repeat that the rewriting of a new piece seems to me very different from adapting an old piece, which happens all the time. Just received another 12 pages last week of play one, of a new one that he, John's written. Right. He, he hasn't been able to do it. It was basically wrong, disloyal for Peter to take over at the point that he did. It is unwise to try to understand the gods. Woman surrounded by other women on the beach. Lightning flashes, they collapse. A huge tent-like fabric comes down. A storyteller comes out with a bottle of liquor, sits on an abandoned boat and drinks. All gone. Who is to blame? Everyone. But everyone is innocent. Could it have been otherwise? Is that how it really happened? Why did it have to happen? Because that is the story. Lightning flashes again, the tent falls over all of them. The dead stag was hanging in the middle. A director's life is extremely, it's ex it's no, it's extremely lonely. It is. I mean, and if you tell a group of actors just how miserable you are, <laughs> you're indulging yourself and you, and you might just as well shut down the production. Mm. So you have to be uh, Mr. Cheerful and you might tell your wife or you might go home and kick the cat, but it has to be an extremely private thing. This is about, this no, 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 this, no, 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 about. this is general, this is general no, note that I'm finding it possible to work in. This atmosphere of, oh, all right, okay, yeah, I'll do something, fine. Um, not just, not, not you, Vicky. Um, we're going to try, we're trying to make this work. We're all trying to make it work. So let's try to make it work. And not get stuck in these things. I can't do anything. I can't do anything unless we're running with the new ideas in the same energy as we run with the old ones. Because there's no point. It's joyless enough. I don't, and I don't, I can be asked. Because um, I can't do any work without you guys working. Um, there is something in this which is good, which is coherent, which we should push. Um, and we'll do that after we have 10 minutes. Now, I'm just beginning to get that nobody ever fucking believes in anything we ever did. David Ryan, actor, storms off. Sorry, okay, carry on. Just what is difficult about this process is that as um, the necessary director. junior director to Peter Hall, I don't have any power of making decisions myself and I'm not in control of the rehearsal process. That makes it incredibly frustrating as a, a young director who's used Peter to Hall. being able to work the way that he wants and make those decisions. So in one sense, the worst case scenario is feeling that you need to have a little pat on the head from the older director. Also because there are 40 years um, of taste and style that separate us. Sometimes Peter just does not understand what I'm doing or would want to do. So I have to defer every decision in the rehearsal room to Peter and, and second guess Peter's taste, which means in the sense that I'm acting a version of Mick. Uh, you know, I mean, do you really care? That's our big problem. Yes, that's I a, do that's care. a problem. That's I our do problem. Care. We don't really I do, care. No, I do care terribly about Helen. Do you? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, I, to me, we do care. We bring ourselves to the central question, did Helen cause this war? And what we're left with is, you're not going to get the answer. Why make all this fuss? Showing a man about with a mask. Did or didn't aviation do or Now the war's begun. Why give moral reasons for something that's enjoyable and worthwhile in itself? A woman holding a baby. A good war refreshes everyone. I mean, there will come a moment, and it's not so long away, when I will have to put everything on the stage and say, that's lovely, but it's not necessary, that's fine, but we don't want to do that. And I will have to then be acting, Actors not as a director, in a sense, but as an editor. And staffs. And that, that process must come. And at that Practicing. moment, I'm sure Edward and Mick will be shouting and saying, you can't do that. And I will have to defend that corner very hard. But that's all very creative. 
slow motion fighting with the steps. This clash can be very creative, but ultimately it will be frustrating for me because I'm going to lose this um, argument because he's the one who's going to have to make the decisions in order to get this show on. You hated my father, didn't you? No. In production. No. Mask with a sun face. That he made me angry, and times too when I loved Bags him. Then eyes. why did you quarrel so often? Oh, men do when the pressures are great, and when each are both right and wrong, it always leads to quarrels. Samurai nut in his hair. Now it's the 4th of July, there's a flag waving. Robert Pitkoff is out. Kids playing. He spins a little boy around. A double decker bus pulls up with all the actors. Yes, the day is the 4th of July when most of the British were thrown out of America 230 uh, something odd years ago. I think they would have been very surprised. Those Actually, they David were all English. Ryle, principal actor. George Washington and all those people were all Brits. Did you know that? Touché. That's right. Well, as I said to um, Robert Petkoff, one Cut of the club. principals earlier on, I'm not entirely sure that American independence was a good idea. It's just a fantastic time to to, to have a break and to Mick feel that Sands, the whole country is, and music is celebrating and relaxing. Shows Robert Petkoff on a star, doing jumping waving. We have to go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's going towards evening. The British Arts Council, despite all the criticism, has finally given its largest grant it's ever given to Donald R. Sewell, chairman and founder. And it Denver simply remained for, for us to arts. underwrite the remainder of it. So we will be going uh, after the run here straight to England. So it's exciting news for everybody. Over the mountains. Fireworks exploding. It says World Cup Premier, Tantalus. Ends December 2nd. British tour opens January 2001. More fireworks that end up being welder sparks. Seeing a welder. I'm inside of Moore, the head of Apollo, Carpenter. the shrine of Apollo, which is uh, supposed to be the head of a, a, a giant statue of Apollo that has fallen down. And uh, Dionysus Photopolis gave us a statue head that's a little tchotchke thing that, uh, that he likes. And he kind of broke it up a little bit. It's supposed to look like it's broken. So there are big sections of it missing. And uh, he gave that frame. to our design studio and they drafted it, which uh, hasn't been very useful. The actual tchotchke head has been more useful. I built a wire frame around it and, he looks at and the then, small uh, reproduced it in a larger statue. scale. We'll be okay. We have to send this out to be, uh, to be covered in foam at some point, and I have numerous people bugging me about when it's gonna be ready to send out. Shows the head being made, bit by bit, time elapse. Now part of the hair is being curled, laid on its side. Technicians celebrate with a picture. Now there's a mask with sticks that look like barbed wire across the I mean, this bridge of the eyes and is nose. A, is a practice Red mask hair. for Agamemnon. And I love, I love, uh, I love the alignment Dr. Greg of Hicks. the mask to the character I play. And I, I, I'm very passionate about masks, so that's why I'm working with Peter, because he is too. I enjoy yeah, that journey. Go. It's Come a strange on. journey. It's a, um, metaphysically, it's on a different level. Shows him and another actress. She's got that a long cape. and sensible. But there's always Plain an medicine. Avenger. Will it be my son? If you already know it, tell the story yourself. Away. Well, we're talking about two people. Um, Cassandra, the crazy um, prophetess, uh, demonically possessed by Apollo. We're talking about Agamemnon 
who come together um, at the end of this terrible, long, tortured war over Helen, um, and they're a pair of really lost and broken people. Well, I think that's very personal. In practice? So if she were to kill me, it would be just. Yes. Yes, I believe you. It's as if you tell me something I've already heard inside me. Now it's you who plays the prophet. Puts her hands to the side. And they come together, uh, quite oddly. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not a computer match, Cassandra and Agamemnon. You'd never put them in, in, a, in a dating agency <laughs> together. But there is something about her that really resonates in him. She speaks the truth. You take it off, Agamemnon. I cannot prevent you. I would never do that. It would be a kind of rape. You raped your own wife once. I know that, Cassandra. Then take it off, Agamemnon. Take it off yourself. What are you afraid of? All your life you have longed for someone to believe you. Now one does, you reject it. Why? I Apollo. Shrugs. What are you doing? Clenches her fists. Does this man speak to you? Holds her fist out to him. I cannot see clearly. Holds out her hand. Then drink and stop thinking. Gives her a And she can't help being true because she's possessed. She can't get out of it. It's inescapable. Um, and I think he responds to her truth because he's always on about, I must find the truth. What is the truth? Is the, um, I, Apollo, what are you doing to me? Does this man speak truly? I do not see clearly. Is she, she thinks. Is she fighting Apollo? Uh, I'm, I'm just asking Yes, question. no, um... Apollo, Apollo, Apollo. Uh, Apollo, Apollo, Apollo. What are you doing? Alyssa Bresnahan, well, principal actor. Well, she's falling, I yeah. guess. I mean, and, and it's a whole other... Yeah. Uh, Going into a whole other experience. Yes, uh, lack of control. That's yeah. not... It doesn't feel like the possession of Apollo, and it's a possession of love, I guess. Yes. Shows her backing up, clutching her chest. Falling. What is that sound? <laughs> And the the God reaches for her. You are free of me. Free! For a while. Comes behind her. Then it's time. Reaches for her face. Lifts the mask. Her eyes are closed, fists clenched. No. Mouth open. Open your eyes and tell me, can you still prophesy? Unclenches, opens her eyes, looks around as he caresses her hair. No, I am in the now, not the past or the future. In the now. So I call it. It is where all humans are. Cradles her face. But men like you don't know it. You are fairer than I guess. Now in production, she stands behind him and takes his mask off. His face raised to the sky, breathing deeply. Braced against the By the end of the scene, they're making love by the fire. And something happens. Some soul connection is made. So it's a really, it's an extraordinary moment in the middle of all this stuff. This ten hours of brutality and bloodletting and revenge and uh, viciousness. People will identify with comes the aspects us, of with these the individual archetypes, not characters, that are presented, and that's what the audience will see. They will they will say, "Oh, I am capable of the behaviour and the feelings of Hecuba." I will sometimes manipulate a situation as Odysseus does so well. I'm often caught in the dilemmas of Agamemnon and Priam. I am capable of love, although I find it very 
hard to express it truly like Cassandra and somewhere within the complete the identification different aspects of the play lies your own character which is made up of various strands which are more or less dominant at certain moments in your life which these archetypal characters represent Another composer at the piano? In preparing for this, I mean, it's, it wasn't really an archaeological um, process that I engaged in. I went to folk music that exists at the moment in Greece and in the Mediterranean Shazam. area um, that I've been interested in for some time. Drum, and uh, Because I feel nice. that, you know, the traces are still there in, in music that's played by, by ordinary people in villages, particularly in mountain villages where things change more slowly. In practice around the table, We'll do it all together a few times, yeah, just to we get to get this line nice and strong. Yeah. Okay. Farewell, Mount Ida. So it's a kind of a nostalgic surge of Will you um, be doing that? No, you will. darling. <laughs> <laughs> There's a group of women who discover the, the stories with, with some knowledge, but are drawn deeper and deeper into the stories by a storyteller. Um, yeah, the and when they practicing. make music, it's initially quite modern, um, but they get drawn in to a sort of culture. There's a journey which, which starts in modern times and goes to ancient times and comes out again. So the, the, the potential musical journey is quite, quite amazing. On the air. Let's just sing In the studio. Show your microphone. One of the girls who kept on going. Tantalus director exits stage left, leaves show. Headline Mick Gordon showing his empty office, his calendar, the closing uh, date. Mick had earlier. left for the weekend uh, to go back actually uh, to do some various business in England and I think to celebrate his 30th birthday. Robert Pitt. Uh, the last thing he said Donovan was Marley, see you on Monday. Director, we scheduled him Denver for Theater rehearsals. Property. Uh, and uh, he left on Monday. He was not on the plane. And uh, yes. midway through uh, the day, uh, a fax came, or a fax was shared with us, that, uh, and they, they called a meeting amongst all of us to let us know that uh, through his agent, he said he wasn't coming back. Not one word was spoken to me about uh, his uh, uh, being unsatisfied with his creative control. Since there weren't any artistic differences, since he never said to me that he was unhappy, and since he was personally in charge of plays one, seven, eight, and nine when he left to do whatever he liked with them, um, I couldn't take any of that seriously. Certainly from the beginning, and all of the billing is the Peter Hall production of, and there has been an absolute understanding that ultimately the final decision in all artistic matters would belong to Peter Hall, as it should. Some actors were very angry. Um, I was very angry. I thought, uh, you know, we'd come so far and, and we had done so much work, and there were so many... Uh, unique things that Mick could do with this production and with the actors. It's not a very good feeling to just be in the cast, principal. in the cast, and it's rather demoralizing. But I guess people have to do what they have to do, and that means we have to pull together even tighter. She's exercising to do what we have to do. If anything, it generated more questions in us, wondering, well, if we're losing a director, are we going to get the answers we need to build the show? 
It's I definitely take it felt shocked, but at There's the same no time, I've been in this business for a long time, and Christina part of Paul, this business Horace. is things happen. You know, the fact There's is no business that on a like project of this size, of this nature, these things are going to happen. And exactly. my shirt. You know, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, and we mustn't make it one. It is the most ruthless, efficient betrayal that I've uh, endured in 45 years in the theatre, I have to say. Well, I think, I think the way to handle it is that, is that that is the line. He left for personal reasons, um, and it was you know, decided at some level that that is acceptable, and we don't know what those personal reasons are. We need to know. Why? Because if we we'd didn't, this, me our you, lives would be unbearable. Andrew. What would it be like if we didn't know the secrets of all the kings and queens? No, I think you, you, you take us back to yeah. gossip and likeness mm. again. It's got to really go, you, you were there, come on. You've got to overwhelm her with gossip. We, you know, it's like, it's like when a journalist says, look, you might as well tell me, because everybody knows already. But Edward's anyway. not here anymore at the moment either, I mean. Good John Barton's not in residence either. I mean, it's people come and go. So we've we've lost a large amount of our rehearsal time. So my main anxiety at this moment is how I can divide myself into three and and work all the hours God made without killing the actors, so that they get enough practice. I think we might just just do it. When will you understand? The great Norman gods Luther. are testing us to see if we are strong Disturbing mask. to turn what is done Ruse to us looking. into something rare and noble. Bloody arm. All that we suffer is not of our own Torn nature. garments. What we make of it is ours. This play is definitely uh, under the curse of Tantalus. I mean, uh, every time something that huge happens to us, uh, we immediately are reminded of the fact that as, as it did for Tantalus, there's this giant rock hanging over us, and uh, and it could fall at any time. And throughout the whole process, we felt bits of dust and rock uh, drop on our heads here and there. A little goat book. A picture of a goat. A this year is Virgil. This gentleman will be killed 19 times, Free. and uh, that's a lot of wear and tear <laughs> on a goat, particularly if you have blood splattered all over you. We're a little concerned about the blood getting all over the goat or inside, so we've added this plastic bag, which we've made so it can be replaceable, um, like with a seal meal type method. But we're hoping that he'll be convincingly real enough that when the uh, actor brings him out and lays him on stage, he'll look like the most precious, sweet animal. The and then when she hacks him with the, the, the knife, they'll just be, you know, it'll be a real shock hurt. value there. Uh, mortified that she's hacking into this poor, poor, pitiful creature. So she's throwing his entrails into the fire. Robert Petkoff riding his scooter through the house. Morning. Good morning. Go to bed. Like, stop. We're, we're like whispering. And then we come around the corner and there's the camera. Like, oh, there they are. Actors going into. Do you want to, to do some studio? dog work? Yeah. <laughs> dog vocals. And you guys had an interrupted session, right? Yeah. Will, can you fill me in on. Uh, uh, what Gary the, Logan, what the voice sort of coach. conditions and dynamics are of the scene where you're the dog, where you become the yes. dog? <clears throat> yes. Um, and I, Mitchell. I sort of start becoming Principal the dog um, when I make the decision to kill um, Polymester and his child. See, mother! For sign, I production. Son to you! They bring a lifeless child. He wants the, to, the audience to see transformation. So then the howl yeah, goes. She lifts. Well, she is not weeping. What is she doing? She, she realizes like she has to bury something. She has to c cover it. Uh, she has to take Donald the, McHale, the, the, the child. Like, a, like an animal that carries on child in her teeth. All of this is, is very difficult to carry the child. Doesn't have the neck muscles or anything like that, like an animal would have to pick up. Uh, so we had to make the uh, image of the dead child something that could be carried. And all that will be left of her is the shape of an old black bitch dog. Look at her! She's begun to change her shape already! She digs around the child. 
that which must be got. She is talking of the gold. She thinks it's in the earth. She lifts a shell. Not gold now. Something better. Uh Then Jean Paul Ames doors. We will kill him and his child. Cracks the shell. Family, I will tell you. Takes a shard and rips open her arm. Blood dripping. <laughs> now with the vocal yeah. coach. Now, would you drop the jaw down and forward and keep this rounded so it's <laughs> shows her crawling on the beach. Then she must kicking the sand like a dog behind her. If I were to have just told you the stupidest joke you ever heard, right. <laughs> you want to find that sort of no, tickle coach. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that place that you find abdominally, <laughs> diaphragmatically, is where that touch is for this. This is the bizarrest <laughs> conversation, isn't it? Uh, uh, as, as, yeah. you, uh, as, as we work on this, uh, what we'll try to find is that touch from here right. to the friction of the breath here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and find this. Here we are now broken. Our rage is over and our everlasting city is dead children and dead stones. No, Surrounded by women with chains. story is not yet over. Many tales are told of a family or people suffering so long that none of them remember how their suffering began. Ah! Yeah, that's the opposite of what you think. You're gonna, you're gonna shoot uh, puffs of breath through, outward, so. So there's a. Couple of things that we do have are. Oh. Um, was a like scene shot for me. The ground plan is uh, is a large is a large disc with audience table. on three sides. Uh, there are three fire traps down the center line of the uh, of the stage. There are are showers with a, a river and a pool of water that actors will get in and, and get out of. Make me emotional. So I try to my darling. Splashes the man in with her. There's a large tent that covers the entire stage built out of China silk and it hangs up uh, 22 feet or so above the stage and is a cone shape that, that is uh, supported by cables they show them that are fastened the to the outside They're of the dropping. deck. Across the stage. Come, let's do it again. Let's nice. do it again. Let's they do show it again. models of men the, the, with staff. The horse must be little more near. It just did. Uh, it was exactly yes, there. Right there. Some, okay. The bigger the wheels. From Showing a wheel. There, then I bring this one. Looks like ropes. Going, They're going to pull. You can hear the sound also of the, the horse. This is the Trojan horse wheel. One of two wheels for the Trojan horse. It doesn't frame. look that big right now, but when we actually stand it up in the theater, you won't be able to see the top of it at all as it rolls by the stage. We'll cover this with fabric, and then we'll paint the fabric to look like wood instead of using real wood, because actors are going to push this, and it would be really too heavy if we were to cover it with wood. Show people rolling it. Rocks being placed on the beach. I feel at this Puppets moment, at snakes. the end of July, with about five, six weeks to go before we start technical, that we defined the text that could play here and that will work here. A shirt with a tentacles um, picture We've defined the way to do it. And we've defined the style, the style of speaking, the style of staging, Preparing the style the of movement, and the use of the masks. What we haven't That's done is done it. Detailed. Now they're at Yanni's can we just Can we just begin the meal by raising our glasses? In to August. the owner the ki- who's kindly invited us to, uh, to share this meal. I'd just like to, um, to, m- to make a toast to the journey of Tantalus. We, we're at a point where we can look back over many months of, um, of, in- of incredible work and incredible journey and ups and downs and going sideways and going backwards and going forwards. But we're at a, 
a critical point now. We're just about to finish one phase and go into another. So let's drink in thanks and celebration for wh where we've come from and to the future, the future, the near future of Tandy. Sitting on a long table together. <laughs> All right, time to drink, ladies. <laughs> Groups of people chatting. Yeah. Number 325 here. Flaming entrees being brought out. Lights draped around the corners. Now, Alyssa Bessahan dancing, getting a dollar and a cleavage. Now chairs being brought out, the owner stands on, starts doing a Greek dance. It's Alyssa dancing, now everyone in the line kicking, dancing with their napkins. Dancing arms across the shoulders. Now dancing around the tables together, holding hands. People taking pictures. Lights over the stage. Tech week is going to be uh, is going to be interesting. It'll be nice. It'll be a very pleasant change from rehearsing when we finally add the elements of, Eric, of light and costumes manager. and get uh, a crew of 10 to help move things around instead of a crew of two like we have in rehearsal. Uh, it will uh, it'll certainly open up a whole new can of worms of how to make things work and uh, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be like all, all tech weeks tech is never easy. We have a bit of an unusual Chris Kendall, approach today because forming. we're starting with clothes, makeup, lighting, Jesus sound, everything. Preparing. So this is the test of everything that we've been working for to put it together for the first time. Because the pale be lips make before. a huge difference. Right. They really do. And what that is, just sort of negating your lip color. Right. That's all. God, well, there's so many levels of significance of today. One is coming into a whole new world that's been created by a different team than us. So we now share their work, you know, and the, term and the significance Kirkup. of me anyway, it ups us all a level. It's a world we, we come into. You know. Yeah, and we, uh, we have to get here really early to get a good spot in the dressing room. Showing someone getting painted with green and a green mask. Sunio Yoshi, lighting designer. The beginning of our very long battle. Showing the light to crews. His interpreter speaking to Yoshi. Do you use any that? 81 is the striker. Showing where the lights are the coming pan. from. If we can just figure out how to bring in the shutters on either side. Different lighting from below the stage and across the stage. Shades of light changing colors from blue to green. A wall of different panels with blue and white and black shifting lines. And now lines across the screen like blades of grass that turns out to be soldiers marching with their staffs. Lights on stage, getting bigger and smaller and combining. I like to use many different styles. When you say Greek style, there are many different aspects involved. Sir Peter will be using many different styles in his direction. The next important thing is to see how much you can assimilate and be one with the drama of the play. Time and the passage of time must be illustrated. And if that works, I think we can get the delicate light that follows the flow of おそらく非常に芝居の流れに沿った非常にデリケートな照明が出来上がるだろう。
in a building with red stripes oh, we've got, of light we're along the top. Robert! We, they went to page him. Now it's the group of actors milling about, some in costume. <laughs> oh! <laughs> quiet, quiet, please. Shh. If we could always, guys, uh, arrive on time. To us? In fact, arrive early because we're going to need to use every minute of our tech time. Also, that way you'll be able to hear Peter's instructions and stage management saying, please come back, we're going to do it again. Tech is also um, difficult, especially as a stage manager, because any delay is such a huge, huge waste of time and, and money that uh, you get in a lot of trouble for that. Like, say you uh, may have to wait 10 minutes on, on one person, or you have to wait 10 minutes because one thing hasn't been said or something. Well, if you're making 30 or 40 people wait 10 minutes, that's 300 or 400 minutes that you've lost. Use the tech to fill the house, to stretch your lungs, to get your consonants clear, to know the cues. Don't say, this has gone on for five hours and we're still drudging along. It, uh, and I that don't mean that all the time. No one can do that. But use it technically to fill the space, have ideas, improvise, do things. I, I'm quite happy. I mean, we've still a few more tweaks, which I've been working on with Ed this Colin morning. Colin Keevan, associate to really director and the cast. We're giving them, uh, as they go into the tech, we're giving them their last round of cuts and line changes. It's like we've been, uh, been like children Trying without any toys, pretending to have toys for the last six months. And today we finally get all those toys and we're going to actually to see stage. what the play looks like, uh, which we haven't up till now. You see that? Yeah, did it. Like How beautiful is this? <laughs> yes, I think we don't have to do the cost now. So. <laughs> hey, good looking. What you doing after the movie? What is today? You throw the play at its physical Spins. designs and you hope that they're right. Okay, now the important thing would be not to oh, fall from the grid right now under this. No play ever survives the wrong design, ever. Doesn't happen. So it's very crucial. So I'm going to have a lot of surprises, I hope. They're calling. He goes down the hallway. We'll all gather in the house and we will go through procedure with you, but please be very careful backstage in your bag. Now people with the crew and costumes are coming out. Following. September. The big wheels being rolled in. Ropes are being fastened behind the stage. They, uh, they just got the first of the two Trojan wheels up. Uh, we're at a point now where we need to get all the elements into the stage and start dealing with them. And the big head of column is being laid down on the beach. The lights. Why don't we go to the stage left? Cog being brought up the stairs. A massive head. We may need to actually put the top in first. Being put together by several people. Yes, the wheels are great, Lyle. No, the wheels are in place, they're fine. We have plenty of access back there for actors. Yeah. Out, Maddie. I want to spin it around. Big tent Which being put up. Position. Wiring the fire pit right now, the igniter and yeah, the gas valve. Now we can get a flame up to about six feet when we're really cooking on this, so it's going to be a pretty sweet trick. Well, we're, we're going to have flame to do, rips. since we've got uh, so much flame and so much propane coming out, we're going to have to have people standing by in the bombs with uh, fire extinguishers just in case. A woman during the play throws the fabric accidentally on the fire. That is why you must marry him. <laughs> takes it out and kicks Sam over. Marry him that's tomorrow. exactly. That's wonderful. Yes, that's great. Wonderful. It would be yeah. better if they came from downstairs but, to upstairs. But I don't know that we need All right. Dionysus to be involved sense? in our confusion. <laughs> it's fine. Right <laughs> you know. The big tent being raised. And it's panels above. Bravo! A huge hose. We're running the big hose that's going to fill up the, uh, the pool, which is down, sort of down left. We're about 10 feet under the pool, and it's got 
It's got gallons and gallons of water in it. The air hose right here that leads up into the pool, we're getting a little bit of a leakage off of Shows it when it, when it bubbles off and we're just trying to make sure that it's not air serious and I'm probably just gonna stuff a little rag up in there to fix the problem. Showing a drip. We don't want it to bubble the pool and then have that it's competing with a water drip. Sometimes you have a big of surprises, you know, because, you know, it's grow up <laughs> a lot. It's a completely different uh, feeling if you have a big dark. set and a small model. They, people here have done wonderful work. Scenic and costume yeah, designer. Yeah, 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 yeah very good. But I know you tried to do maybe, that. Maybe just a cloth. Then with I textured paint. Glass and color. Yeah. Yeah. Corn flour. And yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's, it's yeah. corn starch. Yeah. 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 It's as if, you know, we. it's all been done to us. So yeah. 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 Get out of here. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm four feet off the ground on industrial stilts. Green kicks. Walking in sand, which apparently is a precedent for industrial stilts. Um, and I'm playing a 126-year-old king, Priam, who's got about 50 children. So I'm a mixture of complete and utter potency and complete and utter immobility. Shows him That's my role today. Tall stilts. Long we're uh, we're starting our second cycle uh, of tech. We did the first three plays last week. Now we're starting the second three. Uh, today is the second of the second three. Uh, Prime. And uh, probably the, the most difficult, it's going to be the most difficult uh, play of this cycle to tech. It's not my body. Set a tingling in your veins. And make your own Shows blood fire. So I am fire. Let them be dancing. And a torch. Yes, dance with me women. Dance. Prime. Pointing towards his forehead. Pretty dresses. My face. Agamemnon spins around in a circle. People doing cartwheels, dancing around. A woman dancing around, praying. Women in turbans. And fluid movements of dance. With a memon crawling towards Prime. Stands and reaches up to him. A woman brings the a, a red Put it on garment. And lifts her face. Takes the garment. Runs out. The woman sighing. of fabrics. You see the dressmaking, costume making shop. A ring to Andrew Eulish for a fitting. Dionysus walks in. There's a pleated red cape that billows around. He's got a garland of gold flowers around his head, gold bangles yeah. so around his wrist. He's a light inside. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a little yeah, yes. And also some small red. And can I get some speakers with my own music? We've done it. <laughs> We've got that. That's right. Fair, yeah. What do you mean? Uh, you can't say this goes to I have to. <laughs> I have, I have uh, the prayer. And uh, when they're praying, and when she does the, uh, the Shakespeare, yeah, um, it's it, I would say it's about three to four minutes. 
Oh. It's okay. It's not if you put it on this time, he's five in minutes. Yeah. 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 We can do Go that. Ahead. Now in the production. Behind the scenes, trying to get dressed into his fancy you. outfit of red. A lot of golden bangles, almost like gypsy coins. Cassandra on Apollo's head. Who today anyway. deserves most honor? He, whom we do not Other name, woman comes out. Who lords it in Tartarus? In his royal outfit. Feet, Say what you must. A drape across his face of gold, triangular chains. Chainmail looking okay. with medallions. Priam stands Save with his the stilts. Great horse. In... Now backstage, he comes you. out with his outfit. Other actresses <laughs> come through. Yes, and he's oh. tall. That's why I noticed him. Quiet, please. Green room noise. This is noise. just where where Leads we all wait. Actually, area. you have access to all the all the theaters from here, and so this is where I think this is where all the actors in all the different shows just wait in their offstage time. It's it's named the green room because um. <laughs> Here, Mark. I don't actually know why it's in the green room. <laughs> when Prime says bring in the the great horse or bring the great horse There's in, we uh, we drag the wheel in the sound With lock. Ropes. We pull the wheel through, but really it's just ropes and rigging and a big um, metal and paper wheel. The show during the performance. We have ropes below the stage. Hug wheel turns. We're not the pretty ones who get to dance. We're the sort of big ones who pull the, the horse in. Because all the soldiers have died, so they have to they have to bring in their, their big women to pull the horse in. Well, it was like see walking a mask on the moon, with gold stripe down the center. Um, having taken a very bad hallucinogenic. <laughs> Actually, no, it was all right. Face. It was okay. It was okay. But these, Greg Hicks. I mean, if you said to an actor, "What is the worst thing you could do to an actor?" We put them in four foot stilts on three feet of sand with limited vision. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's uh, so. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, here I am. We were an hour into the tech, or at least four hours into the tech, my first hour on stage. I'm still alive. I've got about another eight hours to go. But, but anyway, it's art. They say it looks wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Providing we get through uh, Iphigenia tomorrow, we shall be able to have two complete runs of the play before we put it before the public. We're just hanging on by our fingernails. Just, just okay. We're about up to where we ought to be. Um, now at the stage. When we ran Prologue on Saturday night, I saw a whole mess Peter Hall, at the end of it, which I thought was going to work and didn't. So we've been rehearsing as well as teching. He's speaking to the actors on stage. You can't kill people. Who's the player? And I want to know whether it had been otherwise. It I want to, I don't like stories that have no morality. Kill it. Can, can, can we make it? Paint on it? We try. Texture. If we cannot, we can't. I don't know. We paint the faces in that and we have no, a Japanese no, no, performance. No, no, no. You know that is no, I mean, I, I don't know. We have done so really. many masks and me and Kevin will say, we try to do the best. I think we, we can do it. But just they need the actors little to spell little time with the mask. Well, the mask I must, is not an easy then, thing. Then I must talk to them about that specific thing. From where I am, it doesn't. It, I, I sound a bit, a, a bit boxy. A bit boxy, but um, it may be to do with the, the, the difference. Of, you know, these are different fibres than the other masks, don't you? They're much, they're much more solid. The I don't know. Masks we had one of those soft, agonising conversations last night about masks. <laughs> 
goes absolutely nowhere. I mean, it's, a, it's the biggest problem, because you know quite well that we can't take the masks off and paint the faces. There will be no production. Can't do that. There'll be no staging, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's not an option. We have to make the masks work. I can work in this mask because I love the mask. All I'm saying is I, the quality of the sound, I, I feel, is slightly trapped in, in the mask. Now, I might be wrong. It might be just on my ear. It sounds fine. Great tips. I have to make this noise because if you go, that means you can move your lips, but if the mask is too close to now, you've got to be able to go... Behind, behind the, the lips, then you know that it's, it's, re it's, it's workable. Just in case you thought I was playing a horse in this, in this bed. Right. He puts it on in the mirror. I came here to offer a libation to Apollo. He's got and squinty I find eyes, a sharp nose, downward mouth. We should also try with a pasture. Phone my agent. I want to phone. <laughs> phone <laughs> my agent. All your agent now. Away. They have a caption contest with warriors. Providing we get through uh, Iphigenia tomorrow, we shall be able to have two complete runs of the play before we put it for the public. We're just hanging on by our fingernails. Just, just okay. The see-through mesh mask with ribbons down the side. Not showing the water. No, uh, we'll we'll come to you in a bit. We'll come to you in a bit. A so that you're not, yeah. Taking the top of the show. And um, so this is all just the first cues. Here, so we're here. now at the point where I come out of the water. Under there. Yeah. I mean, if he wants yeah. you to rise up out, then you're going to have to rise That's out. what they want. But have that be the only moment your head's in the water. Okay, but here's a question. Are we going to have mics? Are you going to be mic'd? Is the question. Am I going to be mic'd if I mic'd? Yeah. If no, you're mic'd and mic'd you're underwater, it's not going to work. Yeah, I get zapped. So they show the water. So I get lit it. up from yep. below. Darkness around it. Now they've turned the lights on. <laughs> she gets okay, into the water with her cool. gown. Looking good. And a Ooh, mesh nice, over her huh? face. All right. I did have this dream. I did have this. I did have a nightmare two nights ago. We were doing the technical and we drowned her. I really did. I really did. That's just right. Now I just go under, right? Yeah, but keep talking to us. Okay. <laughs> she goes go under with the mesh around yes. her face. <laughs> Tie it around her neck. There she goes. She goes underneath the platform. <laughs> Where's my camera? Oh, don't be it. She comes back out. Suck to her face. So away. there's not uh, enough clearance. There's not enough um, space for me to put my head up. How long do you have to be under? They say eight minutes, but there I can breathe. You know, it's it's like this. My head is there's about this much space like six inches. from the water to the ceiling. It's very exciting. I feel like I'm in the movies. Okay, let's do all that again. Can we? I just couldn't Going see back it. again. More terrible than any ever seen. The Trojan War. Lightning flashes. What's that? Zeus is anger. <laughs> now they show he the stage. Forced. Who warned him? She did. Who is she? She comes out from underneath. Nothing around her head. <laughs> Steps <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> Raises her hands. <laughs> Is that okay, Elisa? You're right. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> what an entrance. Eh? Yeah. Oh, sure? oh. I was born when the sea was born. Long before the mountains and Mother Earth herself. She's hooked out of the water by the storyteller. I know all that is and was. They bring dogs all that to wrap around her shoulders. And behind the stage, he's got a an antler mask on with red drape around his shoulders. Another woman puts a gold leaf mask around her head. Now the antler is on almost like a lifeguard seat. It's very tall. 
with a long staff. The woman is being raised by cables. The snake woman. Snake puppets for hands. Trying out for custard. There's a long piece of green fabric that Peter Paul pulls from the stage. The woman with the snake puppets. Sees Peter Hall wrap the fabric around the shoulders. All this past is infinite, immemorial, inaccessible. But the future is imminent, and the now being raised up by the cables. Pulled up above everyone else, the fabric draping behind her. It's about nine o'clock, and uh, today was amazing because we we walked in and, and had the same sort Anthony of rehearsal Powell, we've been having. Director, uh, tour, bits tour and pieces, director. trying to fix this sound cue, do that kind of thing. And then before we were finished, just because he was running out of time, Peter really felt the need to say something to the group and sat us all down and delivered just the most lovely speech, I thought. Um, tough in many ways, too, with injunctions about how this thing should go after we've opened and what should be happening and, and this kind of thing, and some, and some very interesting words, uh, potentially frightening ones, about the critics and the, pos the possible uh, reaction of the critics, uh, to ignore it if you can, but of course no one can. But it was just amazing to be standing there in that group saying, yeah, we're here. Having spent seven months of your life on this enterprise, you're hardly likely not going to do your best. I know you are. It's the doing the best that worries me slightly, because it might lead to tension. This has to be played, you all know this, terribly quickly, but very clearly. It has to be played with an arrogance which is indescribable. And if you come on and say, please like us, they won't. If you come on and say, I do hope you're going to survive, they won't. If you come on and say, fuck you, we know what we're doing because we've been doing it for seven months and this is it, like it or lump it, I think they'll like it. But the weekend after next, John arrives back, John Barton. He will come and see it. He will hate it without any question whatsoever. He hates what I, Colin, and all of us have done to the text and has said so. Um, I felt that I had to do it in order to make the thing work. Just to say, um, putting it into a broader context, um, when you do a show, any show, and I always say this to a company before you meet the press and the rest of the world, is that there are strengths and, and weaknesses director. about every piece of work, and there are huge strengths about this piece of work, and there are weaknesses about this piece of work, and we know that it's always that like that with everything. And you all know this, every single one of you who've come thus far have showed so much nerve, determination, and bloody-mindedness that, to be honest, Saturday's a breeze. Um, it's not like a first night for you, and you need to know that. You really need to know that and feel confident in that. That's the best thing I can say to you, and you have my undying admiration. Thank you. Just speaking personally, it's been, I think, one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life, and uh, one that I wouldn't gladly relive. <laughs> but, but having said that, uh, I've enjoyed you all, and I've certainly, I certainly carry out of it um, enough experience and new thinking and new techniques and new possibilities to keep me going for the next four or five years. So from my point of view, it was eminently worth it. Thank you. I think quite truthfully, the impression before the opening the of Tantalus the has been that maybe there's some peculiar disaster uh, about to happen, and I, that's why I use the word morbid. I think the British press have been looking for some kind of sensation. Is the great Peter Hall going to fall flat on his face after all these years in Denver, Colorado? Wait for the next instalment. It's fall in the park, and I would Elisa say Breslin we are about 20 hours away from opening. Is jogging her dog. This is obviously not like anything else that has been done before. The length of time, the life commitment, the 
the challenges that we've been through to make it happen. Um, and this is an opening that is truly an opening in the classic sense that <clears throat> critics will be here, um, people from all over the world will be here on the day tomorrow. So it's, it is like, it's like a World Series game. I mean, it's uh, advertised in front this of is the PA theater. Favorite line, I guess it must be Cassandra when she says, I am in the now, not the past or the future. Showing the city, the waterway, uh, she jogs along. That's how I, I want to live always, and that's how her dog beside her. That's how we must be tomorrow. All of us doing the show. Tantalus is advertised right there, right above then, the wall doing where it she's with jogging nothing else in our minds. Now it's the theater at night. You can see the sky through the windows. Sunrise, opening day, October 21st. See the sunrise at the mountains and the city. Looking down on the street from above. We see Robert Petkoff coming to work on his scooter. Comes into the complex. Lights from the windows above. Make squares on the walls. Flags. This is tea day. Outside. It's H hour minus 60 minutes. You know, we've been at this for 20 years. Donald R. Sewell, and chairman and founder of the Denver Center actually. for Performing Arts. And it's finally about to happen. Feel the dining very room proud of all of those who put so much of their time and talent into and it. Seats. I feel very grateful Branded to the tables. people who've come from all over the world to see it. The set. And am I nervous? Not a bit. <laughs> I was up at 5 a.m. doing um, good luck cards. Oh, you are good. Peter Hall, yes, Edward Hall. I want to thank Sandwich and a glass of orange juice. Thank you, Sandwich and a glass of orange juice for you, sir. I'm going to have some uh, coffee and um, an egg benedict. Egg benedict. Can you imagine Benedict's. now waking up in the morning, going into the theatre, starting nine hours at 10 a.m.? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just unreal because I'm not really awake yet. Um, it's unreal, actually, after such a long time to be um, opening. Because with Tantalus, there's always been a tomorrow, and a tomorrow, and a tomorrow, and suddenly it's don't today. Don't that, Christ! Say <laughs> so what? Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Let's go ahead and start up. I'm going to grab a radio, and I'll meet you up in the theater. Just a second. Um, John, we'll, we'll meet you. Standing, uh, waiting to go work. As you can see, it's kind of Elijah, a crossroads. Elijah, Alexander, Ensemble. Yeah, they're heading out, kind of like a battalion. All the ushers. We've going taken out some line. of our cues off them in how to march and how to uh, be disciplined and organized. Um, Programs John, of we'll, tentless we'll, we'll are being brought in. Okay. okay. Set being prepared. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Ushers okay. instructed. Yeah. Uh, top of aisle two. Cedars. Instruments ready. Hicks. What I do is I imagine that this is the audience in front of me. Doing Buto. Which it soon will be in about 20 minutes. And that I play I play capoeira with them. And I duck and dive and weave and spin. He's kicking his legs. And I don't bore them. his arms. Hopefully. Looks like martial arts. Now in a hallway, someone is kneeling by a bunch of toads. The condemned men ate a hearty breakfast. Breakfast, Larry. Went to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know, it's an old saying I have. I said it to you before. He loses his nerve last wins. Gotta keep your nerve. Um, 
a card and, uh, with happy opening. Our life's too short. It's only a play. Display. We've done our best. We hope the world likes it. And that's all you can do. To the Tantalus company and crew, wishing you the best of luck. <laughs> Being congratulated. Actors coming in. And as long as this event coming, I'm looking forward to just to sitting Zaya. down and... Uh, kicking back and watching 10 plays, you know? It's going to be great to see. I'm Ten in a celebratory book. mood. I'm glad Mrs. it's opening Dunno, and I'm looking Hale, forward to the entire day. Well, yeah. Well, you're just I'm just to never done this before. That's why there's excitement in the air. We're just trying to keep Emily it all Jeffrey, down so that you Apple. concentrate. That's the most house. important thing right now. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Saying that the stage theater is sold out. It's a great atmosphere amongst the cast, and I think a relief to be finally Even, taking possession director, of the play. So, uh, I'm fairly confident of, uh, of, of the results. I think it's really in. great that everybody's shown up Steve here today and good luck cards and everything, all for the first game of the World Series. Who knew there were so many fans, especially in England? It's great, it's really nice. Jersey. Go Yankees. Spoons again. Four dances, 10 in the morning. Robert Pitcock comes in. Yushi is being hugged. Happy, happy opening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Long, 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 long. <laughs> we were young at the beginning. We were young at the beginning. We were just children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sides. Black hair, yes. <laughs> Take it on the mask, baby. Oh, right. Take it on the mask, right. baby. Right. Absolutely. Ah. The Moffat is the lion. <laughs> you know, good time. Reading. Have a good time. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have, have fun today. We're, we're well, going to do good. We're going to uh, do good. 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 The theater starts filling up with patrons. Five minutes, please have one. Behind the stage. The actress looks in a box. Oh, I never look so good. She gets spanked on the butt by another person. An actress in her bathing suit. Walking in the hall. So with the headset makes her way out. People running through the hallway. Director. It should be any minute. Checking They've done with the house down in half. Straight down. Please hurry. We're holding the curtain. Please hurry. Please hurry. Thank you. Carefully. Quickly. Oh, then. The actress in lavender, gauzy material, silky material. Goes out. We got the doors, don't let anybody in, and let's start this show. Okay, we are clear in the lobby. Everyone else is considered a late seater. The doors are being shut. Tickets checked. Lights from above shine down on the stage. Bathing girls on the beach, laying down, one at the shower, shipwrecked boat. And the storyteller comes out, the man with the linen suit. Apollo! Aphrodite! So his wares, statues. Three things I love most. The joining and drinking, the telling of stories, and to be amongst beautiful women. Hands in his pockets. You got any beer or soda or nuts? No, <laughs> but I could sell you a story. What story? An old story of the golden age and how you all destroyed it. What? <laughs> of Apollo, Aphrodite, and Zeus, Clytemnestra, Agamemnon, and Helen. We've heard all the stories. The Behind the stage, Randy Moore Ensemble listens through a speaker. Yes. What's that? So Zeus the Papara grew so angry. I'm just going over my lines with him on his understudy. So I say that I'm still in his picture. And I want, also want to see the laugh and how this opening night, opening day, audience with all these critics, if they're going to really laugh. And it seemed to be. Because often critics can really put a damper on. Oh. 
it shows about 7 after 10 in the morning. A woman holds up a golden egg, drops into a basket. The storyteller grabs it. The egg that launched a thousand ships. A thousand ships of war. Caresses it. My very first entrance in the play, when I'm waiting to go on, it's Erock, one of the Petcock. stage managers backstage with me. He undoes the hatch. In blue. As it and uh, the minute he undoes it, I have to... Part of the I have to grab and has go. scratches in it. It's got a shoulder armband. Comes out with a torch. Lifts out from the bottom of the stage through the sand. <laughs> what is that sound? The war song of the West. It is glorious. It is time to say goodbye to Kara. Don't go. The woman rises from the pool. Don't you know your own mother? Now backstage. He comes out. Robert. Yes. Oh, Someone thank you. Gives him thank you. A packet of something. Another person getting into his warrior outfit. Walks out. Going to war dance. So lead the ant men to Aulis. Achilles raises a sword. Runs forward, his army behind him, doing his war dance. The men in their black armor and their shields stand behind him. He's in gold, gold breastplate, gold shield, loincloth, gold shin guards. He brandishes his sword. Soldiers put up a barrier behind him. Now behind stage. And that's tiring. <laughs> this is it down. They're overly generous. How'd we do? Oh, fantastic. Uh -huh. walk through. Did we dance yeah. okay? It really looks great. All right. With the bouquet. Tight, tight, tight. Good. Hello. The show sounds very good. The audience, we're getting Hanford, good laughs. The audience seems manager. to be very warm and with us. And what we're just hoping is that they'll still be right there at 10 p.m. tonight. We've got 11, 11 hours to go. 28 yes. from the clock. We're on show two. We're going on to show two. Mick Sands, um, composer and music director. Good start. It feels great. I mean, this is the one that we have to lift and let fly. Now the man in the aviator It can't be, not yet. Look, lady, yes, someone's the mustache. lit the beacon on the watchtower. That is only to the baby. when the signal comes from Troy. Who lit it? I did. You lit the beacon? I did. Why, Electra? What's the point of lighting beacons when it is high noon? In the war Someone tower. with a torch oh, really in the audience. Here, come and speak to you like My mother is a fool. Greg Hicks getting a massage Agamemnon backstage. Is coming. Thunder crashes, sparks fly, women scream. Storyteller story puts his arms apart. That was a brief one. <laughs> Agamemnon killed his uncle, but he also killed Clytemnestra's baby. Bloody hands. Shirtless man. Clytemnestra. Agamemnon. I am ashamed and loathe myself. She cradles her dead baby. What I have done to you will haunt me all my Bloody life. Bloody hands. Backstage, a woman is carrying bouquets of roses. I tell you, David Ryle is just cracking like that, and he's just so with the audience like that. So I gotta go get all this off. Just wash her bloody hands. Gregory Hicks gets a bouquet of roses. He smells them through his mouth. Touch tainted flesh and dance with what you've tainted? He is right. It is time to take her. Achilles with his sword. It's a woman Helen with her yellow sheath dress. Hold the flame of dawn. Hail and farewell. Sunlight 
you right on the edge of your seat and uh, I don't have a problem with sitting 12, 15, 16 hours or whatever is necessary to see this. This is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I don't get the bathing beauties though. I'm not, uh, I don't know, are you buying the, well the girls on the, the beach. beach. The beach girls. Oh, that. Oh, okay. Group of people going up the escalator. And now the dining hall filled with people. The How does the woman come through the... How do they come out of the pool? Well, How does that happen? It's a, there's a pool and then there's actually... A pool. She actually... It is. But, yeah, I, but how does she, how does she do this? What? Now the actors... Whoa, chicken cacciatore. ...being in a more quiet area. But they, they sort of let us know they were on our side immediately. They were very verbal. Yeah. You, know, you get an audience Somebody that... Somebody quoted them. Greet with me. No. Oh, God, yeah, audience? I was going to check out all Meritos, Sagamemno, and I heard somebody in the audience doing it. No. I really did. How could they know something uh, like that? I don't know, because I really because don't get it quite right know. anyway. Tantalus cast, five minutes, please. Tantalus cast, five room. minutes. Please have running crew to position on headset, five Green minutes. Listen through the speaker. But in one no, thing, instead. you are right. We must each of us make choices. I've made mine, Odysseus. We will not use the horse. You only think you have chosen. You're really waiting for some divine intervention. Maybe you hope Zeus himself will thump their gates with thunderbolts. Maybe, maybe not, but I know how your plan will be told of in the times about to come. Once upon a time, 30 fools climbed into a horse made out of broken ships labeled, please, hand with care. <laughs> but the Trojans, being less foolish, burn the horse and the fools in it. It'll make a fine story. Is your mind too small to conceive that mixture of cunning and courage which at times can change the world? You pretended to be mad before you came to Aulis. Now you are truly mad. Now behind the scenes, you see the wig area. The actor comes through with blood all over him, runs through. We're at play five. Hanging top. He's got a golden mask on. Okay. Tables are being rolled out. And now, on stage, we're dancing. Crayon and with his stilts and his hand on the neck. And a writhing with a white outfit on the head of the, of the Apollo. Her barb sticks across her face. Characters in different spotlights. In the dark. And now the lights go out. 
backstage. It's after 4 30. Some actors are sleeping. Now we see it through fire. Scene on stage. A woman with a long blue coat. Watching us or sleeping after last night's feasting. The helmet. Underneath her mask. If you laugh or weep, that story's over, Zeus. Now watch me make a new one. The people come running out. Now Cassandra with her red hair. Women around her with shells and chains. Raising their hands to the air. Some of them running out. Now Cassandra comes running over. There's a lifeless child. She takes a coat. If we had not suffered, who would have remembered us? Covers the child. When we are dead things, we shall be remembered. In stories and in songs. Where is your mother? It's behind stage. It says, Welcome to the wetlands. And those tubs hold the water that they're all washing themselves with. <laughs> Next show we get the limo. <laughs> the, 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 the better the food, the longer I'll be able to stay. So you build it up a bit and then they eat and they're on the road. Within kind of 150 years, you've got the most monumental lie. People going down the escalator. You keep talking about it. We're loving it. How are you? It's fantastic. It's absolutely this, this extraordinary. Is a, this is a great for me. I'm, I'm, I'm a camp follower of a show in Britain that runs for 22 hours at a stretch. So. <laughs> Yes, this, this is a picnic. Snippet, snippet, ten literally. And a half hours. <laughs> Showing the outside of the complex. And show us if you know how to dance the wedding dance. Do not touch me, any of you. Dance for us, Cassandra. We gather around Cassandra. They won't let her out of their circle. She's in a long blue coat. They clutch at her. Twists. Rips open her coat to reveal a it's, yellow sheath dress. It's my wedding dress. Take it off. Where did you find it? In a chest. In my master's ship. You found a dress of sacrifice. But you're not a sacrifice. Take it off or you will anger him. I am a sacrifice. To who? To Apollo. She has her hands above her head. Now pointing. To Apollo. Straight up. Mind. What are you afraid of? Now it's her without a mask. It is time to dance. Agamemnon without the his mask. Dance. How can I dance with you? You're not my bride. Yes. I am your slave bride. There's a coat over his shoulders. That is how it is written. By the gods? No. Within us. And in the muses' songs. Arms spread wide, smile on her face. My wife must not see you. Takes his coat off. In that dress. When we reach... Starts to put it over her shoulders. Then you must take it off me. She rejects it. Spins away slowly. He drops it. Flames burst from this Music from the ground. Dance with me and with all who are human. I dance for this man. Bless us in our journey fire. and take us safely home, that we may go on searching. And learn what we are born. And then see them through the fire as she takes her strap off her shoulder. The World Series is on TV now. Yeah. Oh, I, root for, I write for the New York Times. I root for the Yankees. 
and the Mets when they're not playing the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets are the Trojans for me, and the, the Yankees Seattle are the Seattle Times. We're at 10 minutes for the Tantalus. This is outside the complex. For the Tantalus. Top of the seventh year, it's the bottom Theater of the Theater critics, New York Times, <laughs> and New Yorker. Right. We just finished the seventh play. Sorry, guys. In let's go, let's go. All right. Life is going to replay. Let's just see the replay. Try to linger to see the baseball game. When such things happen, we have to make the best. And a woman in the in red dress. I have always known that the life of a child is the knife. first thing of all things. A woman in a bridal no gown holding a hatchet. Less than I have. A white gown. They are not so lucky. Someone kneeling beneath her. Their luck is really lost. The woman holds the dagger out to her, bears her neck to the white woman. Do take that dress off, you look so ridiculous. White woman runs away, grabs the one that was kneeling underneath. I am about to go come up out of the sand for the end of Hermione. We are now in the eighth. And counting. In her mesh Where mask. Where are you? The old man, aviator, with a tin cup. Those who deserve happiness do not always get Listens in the cup. And those who don't, do. Do what? in get the cup. Go away. I've got to be treated fairly. Throws it. Why she comes from the ground. Is the sea fair? Or the wind? Or the rain? Or the sun? Or the lightning? When Zeus sees a man like you, his mind is more mixed than usual. He's given out so much from the great jar of sorrows, while the other jar of blessings is still full of gifts. Now it's no, I'm 9.35. Tired. I'm really tired. 21 more to go, though. Let's see. Now there's a woman in all gold, even her skin, long hair. One time, the lipstick going on badly is a good thing. Gold yeah. mask. But you know what? It needs to be yellow. And jewels draped. Helen, come out. We must go home now. Ready? Okay. She's behind the stage. Now she comes out behind a gauzy piece of material. She holds with sticks. You see her shadow behind. What is it you want? The man. I want the truth. Hair. I want to be wiser. Chest plate. Wisdom is a mist. She comes behind him, behind the They say the truth is wisdom. Did Paris seize you or did you go willingly? <laughs> what does it matter? She hides behind the material. I am your war prize. You <laughs> sit around her. Don't you want me? No, no, no. Yeah, I feel um, deeply. Um, what's the word? Purged, I think the word is. Yeah, purged. This is not the end. It is not the beginning of the actor. end. But it may be the end of the beginning. And uh, never know how we might be doing this for the rest of our natural lives. Great. Thanks, America. Okay, we're ready to rock. Mm, the snake Take puppets. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is it. It's going down. It's going down. Get him. Boop. 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 Ready to go out on stage. Now he's got the antler mask. The Pythoness who sits underneath the earth. She raises a truth. Yes, God's truth. Speaking through the Pythoness. On a she's breathing throne. in his words from the papers of a chasm in the center of the world. Holds the snakes up to the people. Does she say? You already know it, but you do not know you know it. We will when you have told us. There were and are two heavens. Behind the stage in the green room, deserted. It's now 10:15. Lightning crashes. The throne falls. This is not in the sources. Is attached. 
So his pole slides down through lightning. The women on the beach slowly take their masks off. Look around. Where have they gone? Where's the story? Where's the storyteller? Everything's changed. Yes, changed. Storyteller comes out. <laughs> changed utterly. <laughs> You're back. A storyteller. <laughs> Where have you been? Where I've always been, in the heart of the story. <laughs> the story? What has happened to the Mused. story? Ah, the golden age, when men and women lived like gods, but they began to imagine that they themselves were gods. You've all destroyed it. Lightning flashes, they duck. What does your say now? He stands. What he once said to Tantalus. You have all sipped my nectar, so in part you are immortal. You hope to become godlike without first understanding what it is to be human. Crashes again, darkness. I will set you in a pool of fresh, refreshing water. But when you try to drink, it will ebb and shrink and dry. You can see different parts yes, of the you're lucky, and if there is time, you may learn many things that you do not yet know, perhaps about the gods. The author. Or the ocean. Or the sky. Set in art. Or even about yourself. Of course, you may learn wrongly. And even discover things Directors. that you do not want to know. Sometimes you will feel that you become wiser, and sometimes you will get the sense of making sense of something strange and deep. But when you wake up in the morning, it will make sense no longer. Nor fit as well as you thought it did. Sometimes you will feel you've left something out, and will wonder if it's lost or whether yet to find. But take heart. One night of nectar lasts long in human bellies. And dancing at Yanni's. But since the truth that's told the morning after drinking is apt to be garbled, <laughs> your children may First day be practice. tantalized. And you will not know why. I don't think there is such a thing as as John really Martin, controlling author. the experience of an audience in a play that is diverse and mythical and partly comic and partly political and partly tragic. I don't think there is such a thing. So I'm, I, I, I'm ended end in a kind of, kind of cosmic bewilderment. You see the set, actors are joining together on stage. Audience clapping. A grand epic achievement will left stunned, shattered, and amazed the Times London. An intriguing, thought-provoking, and exhilarating spectacle rapturously received by the audience, The Guardian London. A theatrical feast, a Belmont's bunk banquet of virtuosic writing and stagecraft, The New York Times. Perhaps something that our sedate theater and the timid existence it mirrors have lost. The awesome, terrible, and thrilling monster of life's vitality. Without the inspiration of Denver, couldn't have happened. Without John's extraordinary kickstart. And one day, I do hope that he will like it. Because I think what's on the stage does great service and great honor to him. The whole process, to me, has been a model of what theatre ought to be about and never ever is. Darkness. Now we see an eye closed behind the mask as it moves away from us into the shadows. Director Dirk Olsen. Producer, co-director Benjamin Francis Phelan. Co-producer, production manager Carrie Dignan. 
editor Bryce Burton. And now the credits are rolling.